Good afternoon all. Camelback Trading 2724 coming to you this Tuesday afternoon, June 16th. We're looking at the market profile of the SPY ETF here on Window Trader. And for a day that ends 10 wide, <laughs> it was just absolutely roller coaster, absurd, huge rotational after we had our outliers in C and, in C and D. Um, who won the day? You know, we close up almost 2%. Yet we had an 800-point gap almost. Almost an 800-point gap that got filled in C and D period. We filled it, we filled it in, in two time frames. Only to come back, have an afternoon rally high. I'm, using it, I'm going to use both J's high and L's low because they're pretty visual reference points for tomorrow. Um, I, obviously, they're not by any stretch of the imagination true afternoon rally highs or afternoon pullback lows, but I will use them. We closed... A penny above the pock on the nose, right? Right on the pock. Just above half back. Just below Thursday's high on the daily, which puts us basically back in balance. Um, not an easy day for me by any stretch of the imagination. I got caught long in C. Um, wiped out what I was uh, up in A and B. Took me the rest of the day to battle back, but I did come back and finish green, which is a really, really good feeling because I was down some pretty good number. Um, after that uh, happened in C period. And I actually would have had a pretty good day, but I had ran out of buying power and it took Mr. Chucky Schwab an hour to refresh my buying power in my trading account. And it cost me to miss this beautiful trade here because I was long and I'll go over everything in a minute. Actually, we'll go over them now. So who did win? We never saw the opening after the first three time frames. We kept trying to push lower, fill the huge gap. That's a notch in the bear's belt. But we had higher value all day. We had higher indices all day. So again, you know, to me, we're in balance in the weekly and the daily. So that's still a market waiting for more market generated information. We did not fill that huge gap above. Certainly looked like we were going to get going and get to it in C period. But Mr. Powell put a stop to that, which put the algos into a frenzy, a tizzy, and they stayed that way basically the whole day. As far as my trading, I took a, uh, a long play in a period. It opened, right? We never saw the open. It came down. We got down to marches high. I'm like, maybe they'll try to hold that. Plus, we had some poor structure when it ripped down. And I've talked to you about those poor structure plays. There or many of them today. And I took advantage of a bunch of them. And by that, I mean in each penny increment, when these time frames were opening on the half hour and on the 15 minute, they were ripping higher or lower and leaving price points that never got traded at. And for the most part, they always get filled. Not all of them did today. We left, I think, one or two small ones on the upside. But for the most part, they get filled. And that's why I took that long in A. It turned out to be a good trade. B period, I had a poor high. B period, traded back down. I took a long against the poor high and against A's low. I'm like, I don't think they'll start one time framing down with the indices that strong. Wrote it back up, took the uh, uh, poor high and held A's low. That was a nice trade. Now C period. So the thought process is still the same for me. Yes, we're struggling back and forth through the opening, but the indices are up tremendous. We have a tremendous gap below us and values higher. So I took a long position. <clears throat> now, nothing big, luckily, although I did add to it, started flushing out. Now, with the initial flush, I thought maybe that was just some weak longs, right? The overnight was totally long, and we were long in A, B, and C. Obviously, when it started ripping, you knew something more was going on. I added a couple of times. By the time I got out of it, I was in a pretty deep hole. D period started. We had singles. I actually took a short play for poor structure. It popped up. We had some poor structure. I, I took that down, made some back. E period. Now, E period is where I, I got back a bunch of what I was down, but then gave some back. So E period open. We stopped the one time framing down. We started getting into the single prints. I'm like, you know what? We have a, a very nice buy tail. I'm like, all that was was, you know, whatever it was, what Powell said, week longs getting out, overnight inventory uh, adjusting. So I got long and it started paying off nicely and I got back most of what I lost in C. 
But then when E really started getting going, I added. Added decent size. And boy, that turned out to be bad. As it never got the singles, went right against me. And then I took that small loss back into a big loss again. Not as big as in C, but now again I'm out. So I regrouped. I'm waiting for my buying power to refresh. It usually takes 15 minutes. It took an hour. And because of that, E went down, right? F went down. G, as I would have absolutely have gotten long once G took out F's high because I thought then we would finally fill the single prints. Well, I couldn't do it. I didn't have the ammo. I could only watch, which really ticked me off. I did take a short and I period when it finally got my buying power back. I took out, I took it right before the break of H is low, figuring we'd get down the park and we did that. So that took away uh, some of my loss. And in fact, I think that might have even put me green a little bit. Or maybe I was still down. And then K period, again, I took a short against a poor structure. That worked out. Um, and then L period, I think L's where it finally put me green. It came flushing down, took a long against, value low, wrote it back up, got out of it, went green on the day. Nothing earth shattering. But when I was down what I was down, it was a victory. Look, you could have made money short or long today. But these rips inside of here were vicious. I mean, we were getting 50, 75 cent rips either way. So um, it was dangerous. The, the, the most dangerous part of it would be taking it inside of where it was occurring around the park. You know, this one, I mean, I took it for specific reasons. We I figured once, if I take that H is low, we're going back to Park. We're starting to build Park. That's why I took that. But some guys made some great trades up here against G, H, J, and K's high. I did not do that because I was still a little long bias based on the fact that the indices were up very good and we had higher value. So even though we kept going up um, and, and we kept failing J and K, I just couldn't bring myself to take a short. Yes, the risk reward would have been good. But I just couldn't do it. At least I did not go long thinking we'd break the top and go for the opening. Not the easiest day to trade, but I survived. It's not the money you make. It's the money you keep. I kept a lot today after that loss. Okay, destinations for tomorrow. You talk about chop today, wait till tomorrow because of this range we had and because our destinations are kind of all over. So... Where did they close it? They closed 312.96. Oh, they have a weird close. Well, I was going to use the 10 wide as a down, uh, upside destination, but it's going to be a downside. So my upside destinations will be Jay's high of 314.37. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, afternoon rally high or whatever, but I think it's a very visual point, just like L's low is going to be. And then above that, we don't have anything to today's high, 315.64, and then filling the gap at 318.22. It's still a 258-point gap. It was 600 and whatever, seven points. So they took a good part of it away. I think if Mr. Powell didn't say what he said, we might have taken more out of it. But is what it is. For the downside, we now have 10 wide, 312.74. Then we don't have anything until I'm going to use L's low at 310.61. Again, whatever you want to call it. I hate to, it's it's silly to say afternoon pullback low and afternoon rally high in the same day, especially when they're not even the textbook definitions, but they're very visual areas and I will use them. So 310.61. And then we have today's low of 307.67. And then below that, we don't have anything to the single print from the 15th. 303.80 get filled at 79 and 303.05. Get filled at 302.63. Now, let's go to the charts. And let me tell you something before I, before I talk about the chart, uh, you know, with the charts. I, I'm, I'm very honest in my room. If, if I'm not, you know, they, they certainly know if I'm getting hurt because I'm walking them through the trades, whether they're I'm making money or not, you know, that, that's what this room is all about. You know, it's education. It's not to piggyback off me. A lot of guys did very well today, um, doing opposite of me. You know, it's to educate. And if I'm in a losing trade, you know, I'm telling you why, I, you know, it happened and why I'm in it. I, you know, you're never going to hear me say I took a long or a short because I took a shot. So 
Um, it, it's, it's educational and it's very important for everybody to know that. So monthly, we still have a, two weeks left to go in the month. It looked like they were going to get above March's high. They did get above March's high, but now we're below it by about $2. Is it the end of the world? Not yet. We're still one time framing up two months. The monthly's still healthy. Weekly, yes, we gave back a lot today, but look what they've accomplished. The bulls might just be exhausted. I mean, think about it. We traded down to 296.74 yesterday or the other day. We traded up to 317 today almost. I'm sorry, three, uh, 315.64. It's a $20 move. So we're balanced to down right now. But it's impressive how they've come back. Daily. Again, we were one time framing down three days. To me, this is just now a four-day balance. It's a large one, right? It's going to be today's high of 315.64, yesterday's low of 296.74. So yeah, that was yesterday's low. We have a $20 move from yesterday's low. Balance. Gap still needs to get filled. There's gaps below that still need to get filled. It's a market still searching for more market-generated information. These algorithms treat the S&P like a penny stock. It's incredulous. Anyway, I hope you had a good day trading. Have a great night. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org, and we'll speak by to the opening tomorrow.